Hey guys, Enders here with another video. Today I wanted to do an updated guide for beginners starting out in Black Desert and go over the classes available to us so far. My goal here is to help you find the class most suitable for you. There's a lot to get through in this video, so timestamps are in the description or you can jump around the chapters to find what you're looking for. There are currently 24 classes in Black Desert, 22 of which have two distinct styles called Succession and Awakening. Now, Succession branches from your main starting weapon and Awakening branches off a second weapon, utilizing both your starting weapon and your second weapon. This effectively means we have 46 different playstyles to choose from, which can be daunting for a new player. I'm going to do my best here to give you a sense of each class and how they're performing in the current meta, but be careful about choosing what is simply strong, as class rankings are always fluid, and what I tell you will of course be my opinion. So trying to remain as unbiased as possible. Of course, feel free to offer your own opinions in the comments. We're going to start with the latest class to join the ranks of Black Desert, Drakania. She is a Dragon Knight inspired character with a lot of damage in her succession style. Her awakening is currently slated to release very soon, but being the latest class to release in Black Desert, it will more than likely remain strong for some time before seeing eventual nerfs. That is how classes tend to be in Black Desert. You get new ones coming out. They tend to be strong or at least get buffed to be really strong and eventually get some nerfs. Draconia does excel in group PvP, helped by her large damaging AoE abilities. She is fairly average when it comes to grinding and dueling one versus one with other players. On top of excelling though in large scale fights, she is surprisingly very easy to learn and very new player friendly, though some players dislike her relatively slow and heavy movement. Now, another relatively slow and heavy movement class is the Guardian. Her Awakening performs very well in PvE and is fairly easy to learn. Her Succession is above average in group fights and dueling. However, when it comes to the larger skill wars, she is completely outclassed by Succession Draconia. If you like the slow and heavy combat style and are more interested in eventually participating in larger PvP wars than mostly PvE content, Succession Draconia would be a much better selection. Otherwise, if you see yourself more of a PvE player and like the slow and heavy movement style, you should give Awakening Guardian a try. Berserker on first glance may seem slow, ugly, awkward, but this class has incredible mobility. Though recently nerfed, it is still very strong in PvE, and both Awakening and Succession has good dueling potential, performs well in large-scale wars. The class is just fairly easy to learn when it comes to the basics. It does take a lot of practice to master at the high level. It's definitely one of those classes in Black Desert where you can easily tell a novice from a veteran by the way they're utilizing their class. Berserker has been historically one of the least played classes in the game, but has gained some popularity thanks to their excellent group PvP performance in the past year. Couple that with some very good PvE performance, Berserker ends up being a great all-round class. Sage is one of the more recent classes to Black Desert, giving us an almost Zeus-like style with his awakening. One of the coolest classes I think to ever release for the game, Sage also used to be one of the most powerful classes in large-scale wars in both his succession and awakening styles. However, he has since been nerfed greatly and largely left in a forgotten state. Awakening is still okay in PvE, but falls short in every other category. Succession Sage, on the other hand, is one of the worst classes in the current meta, so if you want to play like Zeus in his awakening, I honestly would recommend recommend you first level and gear up with a better performing class and then trying Sage then. That way you can gauge the differences and feel the comparison between the two classes. Tamer is a melee style class with a pet companion, one of the more unique classes available in Black Desert. It has suffered from a lack of vision and direction from their balance changes in recent years. Awakening Tamer has historically been a strong duelist, but it takes a lot of skill and experience to perform well in that scenario. Succession utilizes more of the pet companion abilities, being able to ride their summon and deal abilities at the same time, but overall Tamer in its current state is below average, and because of this, Tamer has become one of the least played classes in the game. Nova is the best example of a class with two distinct styles in their Succession and Awakening. Succession Nova is slow and heavy with a demonic summon that helps her deal some very impressive damage. However, Awakening Nova gains incredible speed in exchange for some defenses and offensive power. Awakening Nova in particular was favored for some months in large scale wars but has since been nerfed to a more manageable state. Both Awakening and Succession Nova remain underrated I feel like, with Succession becoming more popular recently in the equalized ranked arena PvP mode. They're doing very well in this mode because of their defenses and debuff capabilities. Awakening Nova remains a strong class all round and though simple to play, both styles require some practice to truly eke out Nova's potential. 
Hashashin is an assassin class with a lot of flair. You command sand tornadoes, you can even become a tornado. You have sand serpents through your skills depending on your succession or awakening style. This is another class that was performing very well in succession especially, but has since been nerfed. Currently, the awakening style is preferred, being slightly better overall. Hashashin is an agile class with average to above average PvE performance and average PvP. He is a class that requires some skill to perform well in. Really good players are able to outperform the class's limitations, but the class as a whole has seen less popularity in the recent months. Sorceress is a dark magic class and one of the oldest in the game. Without a doubt, Awakening Sorceress is the more favored style with its more varied toolkit. Sorceress is known for having invincibility and movement, though at the cost of some stamina. This is another class where you can easily identify novice and veteran players. Succession Sorceress is technically the much weaker style, but her PvE potential in Succession is higher in certain endgame zones. In Succession, you gain a lot of forward guard abilities that make PvE more comfortable in higher end spots, where the damage you're going to be receiving is a lot higher than normal. Having forward guard on your abilities allows you to block some of that damage and allows you to effectively grind some zones with the less than recommended defense points. With that in mind, Awakening Sorceress is still the recommended style if you want to perform very well in all types of content. Archer is a pure range class with only the Awakening style available to them. One of the more stylish classes in the game, Archer underperforms compared to a class like Succession Ranger in the same role for mass PvP. Now historically, Archer could rely on their range crowd control, high damaging abilities, but in recent years, the overall damage of all classes has increased. This directly plays into Archer's main weakness in PvE and PvP. He just has some of the lowest defenses in the game. Currently, his mobility is limited and with a lack of damage mitigation, the class is struggling in most content. Good players are still able to outplay opponents in smaller scale PvP fights. They perform well in large scale wars, but good archer players are few and far between these days. The class just requires twice the effort of other strong classes in their role. And in the end, archer is simply made of paper and having high damage abilities mean nothing if you're dead half the time. Ranger is a similarly ranged class, more so in Succession as an Awakening, you become more of a melee hybrid class. Succession Ranger is one of the higher damaging classes in the game, but like Archer, is very weak defensively. However, Succession Ranger is able to deal out their damage more effectively than Archer's. This leads to Succession Ranger being more favored in large scale fights for their high damage range abilities. But Awakening is favored for everything else. Awakening Ranger is a strong duelist, has good PvE potential, one of the original classes in Black Desert that I think is currently in a better state than in recent years. Corsair is one of the newer classes in the game. She has unique mermaid skills that can be utilized in both Succession and Awakening. Succession Corsair's main trait is the ability to negate your block. She can prevent you from guarding for some time and can even destroy your block fairly easily. Succession Corsair was favored as one of the better classes in large scale fights for this ability alone, but has since been nerfed greatly. The nerf also impacted Awakening Corsair, a more ranged style that utilizes her crew of otters for additional summon damage and crowd control. Awakening Corsair is a very fluid class with high damaging abilities that is currently one of the more underrated classes in the game. Unfortunately, the nerf to Succession Nova did also lower Corsair's overall damage mitigation even in Awakening, so she struggles from weak defenses. Lon is an assassin class that can fly or airwalk and has great PvE in Succession and great dueling potential in PvP. Succession Lon is possibly the easiest class to get into and performs well in PvE. However, Awakening is favored for their superior dueling potential in PvP. More specifically, Awakening has a ranged grab or grapple skill. However, when it comes to PvP, both Succession and Awakening have really high stamina costs. And this means you're punished for overusing movement abilities and skills. Couple that with her low defenses, Lon really needs to finish PvP duels quickly, otherwise a loss is likely. Historically, Awakening Lon had a penchant for going in for a grab, missing that grab, so flying away to buy time for their grab to come off cooldown. After their grab is off the cooldown, they will come back in, try and grab you again, and just kind of kill you that way in that cycle. With higher grab cooldown nerfs recently, higher stamina consumption on the class, and newer classes that can close the gap quickly, those strategies just don't work that well these days. Dark Knight is an assassin magic class that is in a fairly strong state in recent months. Succession is more melee focused while her awakening gives her some flexibility with some ranged capabilities. She performs well in PvE in both styles and about the same in PvP as well. Dark Knight deals high damage and has good damage mitigation with some invincibility movement. It's a fluid class, Dark Knight is also easy to learn but hard to master. Class matchup experience is going to be needed to perform well meaning it may be a little bit more of a difficult class to learn for a new player looking to PvP. No matter her rank though in the meta whether she's bad she's good dark knight has consistently been the most popular class in the game since her release in 2017 
Shai is a support focus class that is fairly unique in that she does not have an awakening or succession style. She is currently the worst duelist in the game, but until recently, one of the better PvE classes at certain high-end spots. Until recently, because she's had some very powerful effects on her skills get nerfed, leading to Shai's PvE performance to degrade. She is mostly used as a buff class in large-scale fights. Usually, you have a full defense set for Shai to try and survive as long as possible, but her mobility is average and her potential is limited by players in her team and party. If you play in a group, you can perform well yourself, but you really need strong teammates with good communication around you to succeed in PvP. She has the unique ability to compose music in-game and so far is the only class to have class-specific mounts like an alpaca you can receive through quests. Not an entirely popular class, but a very dedicated player base for those who want to go the shy route. Witch and Wizard are two classes that are primarily ranged with some support abilities in their kit. They have been historically strong in all forms of group PvP thanks to their healing, slows, and group buff abilities. Succession lends itself to be more mobile with more range focus, while Awakening gains a summon pet and larger mid-range AoE abilities. PvE performance for both is good. Wizard in Awakening deals fire and water damaging abilities, while the Witch deals earth and lightning focused abilities, although their abilities are very similar. In Succession, they are also very similar, but have a few differences to their skills and movement that set them apart. Of Witch and Wizard, Succession Wizard in particular has seen a rise of popularity in recent years and remains popular despite some nerfs. Warrior is the iconic greatsword user in Awakening and sword and shield user in Succession. He is historically one of the most solid classes in the game. He has tremendous gap closing ability, crowd control, grapple, damage, slows. This class has almost everything. It does very well as a duelist and in smaller scale combat. Their PvE performance in Succession specifically is very high. It is an easy class to get into, but hard to master Awakening Warrior. Another class where you can really tell the difference between someone who's a novice and someone who's a veteran. Warrior falls off in effectiveness when it comes to large-scale wars due to protection gaps and lack of AoE damage compared to some classes in that setting, but you still see them from time to time in that scenario. Of the two styles, Succession and Awakening, you're gonna see a lot more Awakening Warriors thanks to greater flexibility over the Succession style. Valkyrie is a great shield and lance user in Awakening and sword and shield user in Succession, much like Succession Warrior, but that is where the similarities end. Awakening Valkyrie is currently the more favored thanks to their vacuums, support abilities, and ultimate ability that is one of the few to survive nerfs in PvP. Awakening Valkyrie is a solid all-round class that is seeing a resurgence in popularity as of late thanks to the equalized ranked arena mode and some grind spots benefiting from Awakening Valkyrie's easy low-end grind. Succession Valkyrie was popular for some time, but has recently fallen out of favor due to nerves. Musa and Mewa are both unique classes in that they have incredible mobility. Mewa is able to slow opponents while Awakening Musa has high damage output and good AoE. Succession Musa is underrated when it comes to PvE performance, but Succession Mewa remains unpopular. Awakening Mewa is able to slow her opponents and deal decent crowd control, but honestly, outside of Awakening Musa, these classes are not as popular or effective in most content compared to newer classes. Mystic and Striker are two martial artist classes with similar styles. Succession Mystic is a solid all-rounder class, while Awakening Mystic focuses more on slows, crowd control, vacuum abilities with her Blue Dragon summon through skills. However, Striker is on another level. Awakening Striker utilizes clones and is a great all-rounder class doing well in group PvP and above average in PvE. Succession Striker, in comparison, is as good a duelist, I think, as Awakening Striker, but struggles in larger fights due to lack of large AoE and protection. Despite this, Succession Striker is possibly the best PvE class in the game. His high damage output, high survivability, and his straightforward style make him a great starting class for newer players. Something to note, both Mystic and Striker have passive magic defenses, making them tough targets to take down against any magic damage class, meaning a fourth of the class roster in Black Desert will deal less damage to you if you simply choose to play a Striker or a Mystic. Konoichi and Ninja are true assassin style classes that are some of the best duelists in the game. Of the two styles in Konoichi's case, Succession was more favored. Until recently, they had some nerfs. Awakening is becoming a little bit more popular. However, Ninja is on a different playing field. Ninja is just a lot more popular, especially Succession Ninja over Awakening Ninja, though both are pretty good. These two classes, Konoichi and Ninja, are some of the flashiest in the game, but they do require a lot of practice to perform at high level. PV tends to require more inputs as well than high performance grind classes, making them tiring to grind on for longer sessions depending of course on the player.
And lastly, I will quickly mention Wukong, an unreleased assassin style class that will come sometime in the near future. All we know so far is about Succession Wukong. It will be a melee style class, much like the male version basically of Awaken Tamer in style, and it's going to use fire AoE abilities. He is not officially announced for Black Desert BC, but we do know he exists from some leaked files and the release of the class in the Chinese version of Black Desert Mobile. If we go by class release schedule, he should be the next class to release later this year. That's all the classes we know of right now, though I want to remind you of one very important aspect players tend to forget. Just because a class is better than another does not mean you will always win in that PvP matchup or perform better in PvE. For PvP combat experience and player skill and gear matters, and for PvE grinding experience and ease of grind matter. Just because you're grinding 5% faster on one class does not mean you will grind as long as if you are in a class you truly enjoy. As a new player, you don't want to fall for the trap of chasing what is the so-called flavor of the month class as you will often find yourself disappointed in the end. That said, if I were to start the game fresh, knowing what I know now and knowing what is needed for grinding at the high level, Succession Striker is the best class to choose for PvE. He can handle himself in duels if you need to fight for your grind spot at high levels, and his clearing ability allows you to punch above your gear class, allowing you to progress much faster. If you want to play a similarly strong PvE class, but you just don't like playing male characters, Succession Lawn is a good alternative. If you want to focus on PvP, understand that for wars, you're gonna need to progress in gear. There are are introductory wars like tier 1 that allow you to participate fairly early on, but the big castle wars require you to progress much further in gear score even though some of them are capped, but you're still going to need to do some PvE to get there. What you do in Black Desert basically boils down to 95% PvE. 5% PvP, so keep that in mind. There's also attack function in the game that allows you to copy your gear to any other one of your classes for a small silver cost. This effectively allows you to play two classes at once. What most players do is they have a class they grind very well in, say Succession Striker, and then they tag a war PvP class like Succession Wizard so they can have the best of both worlds. This is going to require more time, of course, for practicing not just one but two classes, but it is an option available to you if you wish to be effective in both. And that's all I got for this one. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below which class seems interesting to you and as always if you enjoyed this video please take a second to like subscribe share this video and join the discord community also don't forget to use the code anders class guide in game or on the black desert website to get some items the code should work for all players in north america and european regions it took a lot of work to make this one guys but i hope you all enjoyed the video and found it helpful thanks for watching thanks for listening i'll see you all in the next one take care